Look, thanks for offering to help out here today, Hank, but why don't you go catch some Z's? I mean, you've been digging through the fire rubble all night. Well, so have you. I'm not gonna bail on you now. I just wish we would have found Grace's sister's body. I know. It was total devastation. The fire chief said it was the most intense fire he'd ever seen. You know, it took a lot of guts for your brother Miguel to go in and pull Charity out alive. Yeah, we both got heroes for brothers. I mean, I couldn't even pull Sam away from the fire to take a break. Because he knows Grace won't have any closure on this until they find her sister's body. I mean, he'll do anything to ease her pain. That's real love for you. It's the kind of marriage I want. Yeah, me too. Just gotta find the right woman first. I thought you might like some breakfast. Cook sent up your favorite. Thanks. Oh, that's a bad idea. Get back in bed, you foolish boy. You're supposed to be taking it easy. <sighs> Sheridan, it's only a sprained ankle. Well, a very badly sprained ankle, which you got trying to help me uncover my past at the newspaper morgue. The least I can do in return is to keep you from making it any worse. But I've got work to do. I mean, I can't lay around in bed all day, Sheridan. Well, you're going to have to. Doctor's orders. Now be a good nephew and eat your breakfast. Then you can go back to that romantic little dream you were having. How did you know it was romantic? Judging by that smile on your face when you weren't sleeping, I'd say you were dreaming about you and Gwen doing who knows what. Mm, only it wasn't Gwen. I was dreaming of another girl. You're kidding me. Who? I have no idea. Actually, it has to do with what really happened last night at the movie theater. I sat down next to this girl who I thought was Gwen. I put my arm around her and I started kissing her hand. <laughs> she must have slapped you, silly. That's what's strange. She didn't. Oh, no. It's late. Teresa, wake up. Not now, Whitney. I'm busy being Ethan's ideal woman. Hello? You heard it from Ethan's own lips. Gwen is Ethan's ideal woman, not you. I can't control my dreams, Whitney. And what about you? Did you have any more dreams about Frank? You know, Frank is the last person I would dream about, okay? If he ever finds out that I lied about Ethan Stalker, you, not moving to South America, he'd have us both arrested. Don't worry, Whitney. We're in the clear as long as Frank only sees me in my disguise. Besides, I know you were dreaming about Frank last night when I was dreaming about Ethan. You've got it as bad for Frank as I do for Ethan. planning to paint the storeroom today before the kids got here. Well, it'll go twice as fast if I help. I should have done this weeks ago. <laughs> but with pulling extra shifts down at the station, I mean, it's all I can do just to find time with the kids here. But you work too hard, Louise. Man, I need the dough. Winter's coming. Our heating bills last year were astronomical. I don't expect them to be any cheaper this year. Well, don't worry. When I marry Sheridan Crane, you'll never have to pay for gas or electricity or water again. I'll make sure all those utility companies they own never send you a bill. I keep telling you, Hank. Not gonna happen. Well, a man can dream, can he? Yeah, sure, he can dream, but in the meantime, he's got to pay his bills. But what are you doing these days for money, anyway? I mean, you got to pay rent at Grace's B&B. You bought a car since you've been back. You really want to use this color? What's wrong with it? It's really red. I like it. So? So what? So what are you doing for money? I had a few bucks saved up when I got back to Harmony. I worked on a few charter boats. You got a mixing stick? You know, that's funny because I ran into Harry down at the docks. He said you'd only been there once or twice. But I thought you were coming back to Harmony to build up your nest egg so you could hit the road again. 
And the next time I do, I'll be traveling first class in the arm of a beautiful, rich woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Look, if you're broke, I could lend you a few bucks. I mean, it wouldn't be a lot, but it's fine. So you got a job lined up? Well, ski season will be starting soon, you know, and I thought I'd head up the mountain, you know, and maybe get a gig as a ski instructor. You can't count on that, Hank. What are you going to do in the meantime? You remember those weekends when we used to head up to the mountain and ski all day and party all night? Those were good times. What do you say for a snowfall we take off? I can't, Hank. I don't get a vacation till the spring. Come on, Louise, just call in sick. We do it in high school. We're not in high school anymore, Hank. I mean, we've got responsibilities. Well, you do. Me? I, I break out in a rash when I hear the R word. You'll settle down once you're married. You just make sure the girl you marry is the right girl. You make a bad marriage, it'll tear the heart out of you. I've seen it happen. Well, don't worry about me. How do we get started talking about this anyway? I mean, I was asking you how you're getting by without a job, Hank. Well, I just tap dance through life, okay? I thought you wanted to paint this storeroom before the kids get back. Well, I'm serious, Hank. How are you getting by without any money? Now, that's what I call a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> Beth, how you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Hey, Beth. Hey, Louise. Um, I heard you two were helping Sam all night after that terrible fire in Castleton. I thought you could use some strong coffee and a bite to eat. You are truly an angel of mercy. <laughs> How'd you know I was dreaming about your coffee all night? Oh, uh, just my coffee, Louise? <laughs> well, you are truly something special to think of us. Thank you. Oh, welcome. Look, I'm gonna grab a quick shower. You'll be here when I get back? Um, I don't know. Maybe. Right. Well, if I miss you, I'll talk to you later, okay? okay? You still got a thing for Louise, don't you? Uh, that ended years ago. I mean, we just go out from time to time, that's all. Save it for someone else, Beth. I don't know what you're talking about. Or when you're crazy about someone, it's next to impossible to hide. Oh, thanks a lot, Hank. I mean, it's hard enough to pretend how I feel about Louise when I'm around and without you pointing out how obvious I am. I'm sorry. If it means anything to you, Louise doesn't have a clue. And just for the record, I'm on your side. Are you? Sure. I know how hard it is to compete with Louise's sense of responsibility to his family. I mean, it didn't help things that his old man disappeared when Luis was so young. Yeah. Look, I... I didn't mean to jump down your throat. It's just... It's hard sometimes. I, I never want Luis to... forget his family on my account. His sense of loyalty is one of the things that... makes him who he is. And makes you love him so much. Yeah. Well, this isn't going to go on forever, Beth. You know, Teresa and Miguel are growing up. I mean, he's not going to be able to take care of them forever. So are you saying I should hang in there? <laughs> More than that. You know, I'm saying if you really care about him, you should tell him about it before someone else moves in on him. How could I kiss someone else's hands and not realize it wasn't Gwen's? Don't beat yourself up, Ethan. It's an honest mistake. You wanted it to be Gwen sitting there next to you, so you thought it was her. I guess. Well, I'm more interested in why this other woman let you, a perfect stranger, kiss her, and then why she disappeared. Well, we'll never know. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna run into her again. Frank is no more right for me than Ethan is for you, Teresa. But you were dreaming about Frank, weren't you? You know, if I was, it is all your fault. All your dreaming and scheming about Ethan must be catching. You've got to stop this, Teresa, for both our sakes. Whitney, I've got my feelings for Ethan completely under control. I am not getting back on that roller coaster. <laughs> Since when? But I'm glad I'm still working for his mother in the Crane Mansion, even in disguise. One of these days, Ethan's going to realize that Gwen isn't the one for him, and he'll fall out of love with her. And in love with you, right? Why not? Until then, I'll still have my fantasies. They're not a crime. When the Titanic came out, I had so many fantasies about me and Ethan as Kate and Leo. 
I got seasick. <laughs> nuts. Maybe. But I would pose on a couch in a New York minute if Ethan took out a sketch pencil and wanted to draw me in the nude. <laughs> Teresa! <laughs> Don't Teresa me, Whitney Russell. I think you've had a fantasy or two about Frank yourself. If I have, and I'm only saying if, they were a lot tamer than yours. Well, that's because you haven't had much practice. You've channeled all your sexual energies into tennis, which makes sense since your main dream is to be a great tennis player. Oh, well, thank you, Dr. Freud. You're welcome. But now, you're facing a conflict. I've seen the looks you give Frank. Ugh, you wish. Oh, really? What about at the hospital? You practically went catatonic at the sight of him. That was fear, Teresa, not love. I mean, I know Frank is supposed to be off the case, but every time I'm around him, I get petrified that he's going to start grilling me about you. I don't think that's what you're feeling at all, Whitney. When you're nervous, your stomach gets all tingly, but when you're feeling certain other things, it's your entire body. Oh, that gets God, tingly. now you're Dr. Ruth. <laughs> okay. So where do you get all this scientific information, huh? Not from tennis magazines, that's for sure. <sighs> Whitney, and pay attention. You've got a lot to learn. I can't tell Louise how I feel about him, Hank. Why not? When he said that he couldn't marry me because he had to take care of his family, I cried myself to sleep every night for months. I am so afraid if I put my heart out there again. He's just going to break it like before. Well, Luis is older now, you know. He thinks about getting married and having a family. You know, maybe it won't be the same this time. Maybe. But I have a feeling as long as his father's missing, Luis will put his mom and his brothers and sisters before his own life. I respect that, Hank. I really do. It's just that it's taken me so long to get to a place where I can go out to dinner or an occasional movie with Louise and let that be enough. Only that's not enough for you. Your eyes give you away. Yes. Amazing what a quick shower can do. Your turn, Hank. Am I walking on something heavy here? Uh, very heavy. Hank's just giving me a hard time about my coffee. Yeah, I was just telling her it was so strong it could stop your heart. <laughs> um, I'd better get back to work. Be careful if you go back to that fire site. I will. Thanks again for the coffee. Sure. <laughs> Anytime. Bye, Hank. Take it easy, Beth. Great girl. The best. Remember that conversation we had about letting the right girl get away? How could I forget? Did you ever think that maybe Beth was the perfect girl for you? I'll be working for Ivy Crane all day since I don't have any classes. Well, I just hope you don't run into Ethan. That ankle of his looked pretty bad last night. He may not go to work. So what if Ethan sees me around the mansion? He won't recognize me in my disguise. I don't want to get on your case. I just want you to be safe, okay? Mm, I know. And I want you to fall in love and know what an incredible feeling it is. I would like to be in love, Teresa, but it can't be with Frank. If he ever found out that I lied to him about knowing you, he would hate me. Now I better go. You didn't tell me you got this roll of film back. Yeah, just the other day. Take that one. I got Thank doubles. You. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> um, I'll call you at the Crane Mansion later to see how you're doing, okay? Okay. Okay. Bye. Oh, Ethan. If you could only see me the way I really am. Good morning, Louisa. Good morning, Mama. I thought you'd like to know. 
Miguel just called from the hospital. He did? How's Charity? Well, she's still unconscious. Your brother, he tries to hide his fear, but I can hear it in his voice. Oh, Mama. Sometimes, I don't know, I wonder what I've done that my family must endure so much sadness. You miss your father as much as I do. Now, when your brother ran off, Luis put his happiness on hold to take care of us. And now, Miguel, he, he risked his life in that terrible fire to save a girl who means so much to him and may not live. How much can this family take? Oh, it'll be all right, Mama. It'll be all right. And I fear for you, Teresa. I beg of you. Stay away from Ethan Crane. Ivy said that she wouldn't meet Teresa today so that she could work with you. I'll manage fine without my mother's personal secretary, thank you. <laughs> and you tell Ivy. You know how she frets about you. She wins. I'm no match for her. Well, I guess it'll give me a chance to get to know Teresa better. Mother adores her. Well, and she can't be anything like her brother Luis. From what I've seen, she's not. Of all the people to find us last night rummaging through that old newspaper file. I think Luis got the message when I told him that what we were doing wasn't any of his business. No, he didn't. I ran into him at the hospital, and he began quizzing me all over again about what happened. As if I were a criminal. Maybe that's why I had the dream that I did last night. Why are my hands covered in blood? What did I do? Nobody will ever love me. Tell me, Sheridan. It was awful. I was a little girl. I had blood all over my hands. And there was a body covered in a bloody sheet. And then suddenly I was grown up. And this man, I, I couldn't see his face, but he took me in his arms and I kept asking him who he was. What did he say? He didn't answer me at first, but then finally he said, I'm the one who loves you. I know what you did, and I love you. Did you know who he was? No, I didn't. The other day, Pilar told me that I would find the love that I was looking for right here in Harmony. Is that crazy or what? <laughs> There's no one in this town or anywhere else that would love me after they found out what I did. You know that isn't true, Sheridan. Well, all I know is that Officer Lopez Fitzgerald cannot find out what happened. He would just love to put a member of the Crane family away for murder. Sheridan, don't say that word. That's what it was, wasn't it, Ethan? Murder. Hey, Whitney. What are you doing here? Well, I took the chance you might have some free time this morning. Help me work on my game. Well, um, you know, I gotta check my schedule. Oh, well, actually, I already checked. Pro says you have some free time right now, so, uh... What do you say you show me how this thing works? I already got my swing down, you know? <laughs> Except the point is to hit the ball over the net, not out of the stadium. Yeah, right. Well, you'll have to show me. I'm in your hands. Well, this is how you hold the racket when you're going to serve. Like that? Yeah. You've got a good natural grip there. <laughs> you know, I think that's about the sweetest thing you ever said to me. And, um, another thing. You might want to hold your racket a little lower down like that. Here? Not quite, kind of like this. And um, when you're going for a backhand, you hold it differently like so. 
All right, how's that? Not quite. <laughs> um, you gotta keep your body kind of loose, you know? You don't want to open your hips up too soon. No. I won't do that. And, um, you gotta keep your shoulder pointed towards the ball when you're hitting it, okay? Absolutely. You know, Whitney, you're such a beautiful girl. For a liar. Don't worry, Mama. I'm working for Ethan's mother, not Ethan. Yeah, still, but you're in that house with him every day, Teresa. In my disguise. Ethan won't recognize me as the girl who caused all those accidents. He doesn't see them as accidents. He believes that you were stalking him. Why, Teresa, why are you so set on risking your safety? You're still in love with Ethan, aren't you? I have loved Ethan ever since I was a little girl, even though I never met him until just recently. In my fantasies, he was the prince who came and rescued me and all of us from our lives of poverty and drudgery. Even with everything that's, that's happened, I still never gave up believing it would all come true. She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climbs and starry skies. And all that's best of dark and bright meet in her aspect and her eyes. I thought Ethan had figured out who I was. And this was his way of telling me he loved me. But then Gwen came in and he turned away from me like I didn't even exist and told Gwen he loved her. It was awful, Mom. Oh, sweetie. I'm sorry. I'm sure it hurt, sweetie. I know I can't force Ethan to love me just because I love him. No, you cannot. But I am not going to give up working for Ivy Crane either. It's my best chance of making the rest of my dream come true. I want to know what it's like to own so many dresses I can't decide which one to wear. I want to know what it's like to order anything I want on the menu without looking to see how much it costs. I want to know what it feels like to know nobody's looking down on me or you or Louise or McGill just because of our last names or where we live. You see, Mama, I don't want it just for me. I want it for all of us. And if I can't do it by marrying Ethan Crane, I'll just have to make it happen by working hard for his mother. I know it's hard to love a man and not be with him about you and Papa? See. Oh, Teresa, I'm glad that, that you finally came to realize that Ethan will never marry you. But I beg you, mi amor, avoid him when you're in that house. Because the more you're around them, the higher the risk that he will recognize you as his stalker. Even worse. Mi niña. It will keep the love that you have for him alive. Teresa. Teresita. Por favor. Don't put yourself through any more heartache. For a love that can never be. <laughs> the family always swore that no one would ever find out about what happened. But Luis is already becoming suspicious. What if he starts digging and finds out what happened? Then I'll be charged with murder. I won't let that happen. I will find a way to keep Luis from nosing around. I'm going to miss you so much when I go back to Paris. Sharon, what are you talking about? Look, we've already been through all this. You said you'd give it a chance here. Uh, Ethan, I've tried, but I can't take it anymore. I've got to get away from Harmony and all the bad memories here. I want you to go. And I don't want to leave you either. You're the only person in this family that I care about, but my mind is made up. When are you going? As soon as I get through with this ridiculous community service at the youth center. 
I'm dreading facing Luis this morning. That man really gets under my skin. Well, give me a call if you have any problems. And just don't give Luis anything to be suspicious about. You're in outer space somewhere. What are you thinking about? I was just thinking about what you just said. Maybe Beth is the right girl for me. So what are you going to do about it? Nada. Until I'm ready to commit to marriage 100%, I'm not asking Beth or any other woman to share my life with me. I still got my family at home to take care of. Well, not for long, Miguel and Teresa are growing up. You know, they're at an age right now where they need me around more than ever. I mean, look what Miguel's going through. This girl Charity's probably gonna lose her mom and she's fighting for her life. And then there's Teresa. Ever tell you about her obsession with Ethan Crane? You gotta be kidding me. I wish. Yeah, up until recently, she had her walls plastered with pictures of him. I mean, all she does is dream about living this rich, extravagant lifestyle. Big mansion on the hill, money, servants everywhere. Well, what would be the downside to that? Yeah, that's right, I forgot. That's your dream, too. I'm not turning it down if it comes my way. I'm just gonna tell you right now. I'm not gonna be responsible for my actions if the impossible does happen and she ends up with the crane. Lighten up, buddy. Forget about the cranes. Look, I can't. Not until my mother quits her job as her housekeeper and Sheridan the Deb finishes her community service here. The right smack in my face. about it. I will forget about it. I'm a liar. You better get yourself a new tennis instructor, Frank. Oh, come on, Whitney. I didn't mean that to sound the way it came out. Oh, right. No, really. The truth is, is that I haven't been completely honest with you either. I didn't come up here just for a tennis lesson. I came up here to ask you about the stalker. Ethan Crane took you off that case. And I put myself back on. Well, I've told you everything I know. You sure? Of course. I mean, how many times do you need to hear that the what, stalker... Did, uh, the stalker moved to South America? Yes, exactly. I don't know, Winnie. Why don't you tell me again? Maybe I'll believe you. Because you know what I think? I think that you're covering for the stalker. And I think that when your mother and your father find out, they're going to be very hurt that their daughter is protecting a criminal. You seem like the kind of girl that would hate to put them through that. So why don't we level with each other? Right here, right now. You tell me that the stalker has left the country. And I'll believe you. I'll drop this case. Once and for all. Come in. Teresa. Um, Mrs. Crane told me to help you today instead of her. I'm sorry about your ankle. But at least you're out of that hospital wheelchair. Yeah, thank goodness for... Hey, how did you know I was in a wheelchair in the ER? I, I guess your mother mentioned it. Right. Uh, Teresa, I'm glad you're here. I need you to finish typing this report I've been working on for my father. Sure. The laptop's right over there. Okay. Uh, the only problem is if you'll be able to read my handwriting... Or should I say scribble? Oh, well, this is not bad at all. I can read every word. Except this one. T Tarts? Uh, that's torts. It's a legal term. I got it. Oh, you're good. Oh, well, thank you. I love this laptop. Someday, I'm going to have one exactly like this. You don't have a sister, do you? Yeah. She lives out of state with my aunt. Why? I keep thinking there's something so familiar about you. Um. Oh, sorry. Byron? 
I was checking a poem in there last night. She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies. And all that's best of dark and bright meets in her aspect and her eyes. How did you know that? The past haunts the present. You ever hear anyone say that? No, why? Sheridan said it to Dr. Russell last night in the hospital. I accidentally saw it in her notebook. It makes you wonder. No, it makes you wonder, not Look, me. It's gotta mean something to Sheridan. It's run through my head over and over like a mantra. The past haunts the present. Look, stop looking for some deep meaning in everything Sheridan says. But think about it, Hank. And what would Sheridan be doing in a newspaper morgue unless she was tracking something down about the past? Maybe her past. I mean, what could it be? What's haunting her? Someone's here. I better check it out. <clears throat> oh, well, look who's here. Oh, you needn't look so surprised. I'm reporting for work. Well, you're seven minutes late. The traffic on Maine was terrible. Besides, my travel time here ought to count towards my hundred hours of community service. You know, it's incredible. You are always looking for a way to cut corners. No, I'm just looking to leave town as soon as I can. Since when? It's none of your business. You know, that's strange. You suddenly want to cut out of town when last night in the newspaper morgue you were so intrigued by Harmony's history. Like I said, it's none of your business. Well, like I said, I'm just a curious kind of guy. You know, maybe if you tell me what you're looking for, I might find it as intriguing as you do. I know all the words by heart because I studied Byron in my honors English class. <laughs> Wow, honors English. Uh, I'm impressed. No, it's my favorite subject next to fashion. Well, English is my favorite subject, too. I used to think I'd like to be a writer someday. Well, so why didn't you? Well, my family would have never stood for it. My father and grandfather made it very clear that they expected me to go to law school like they did. Well, it's not too late. You're a wonderful writer. I, I can tell from your report. You really think so? Oh, yeah. You shouldn't give up your dream just because your family doesn't understand. What are you doing in here, Teresa? Uh, your daughter's been helping me, Pilar. Mr. Ethan needs his rest. Oh, uh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Teresa and I were just discovering how much we have in common. Yeah. Uh, I'll come back later, Ethan. Sure. Okay. This is exactly what I was talking to you about. Two minutes alone with Ethan, and you're ready to have your heart broken all over again. Oh, but, Mama, it was so wonderful. Ethan and I were actually having a real conversation. Oh, if only I could stop wearing this disguise, I know he'd fall in love with me. There it is. Don't worry, Mama. Ethan doesn't have a clue who I am under this disguise. And he never will. If I tell you the truth, will you really drop your investigation? You have my word. Ethan doesn't have anything to fear from that girl. She will never stalk him again. Okay, but how do I know You know that... what? I'm running so late. I have to go. Whitney is a knockout. Why does this other girl seem so familiar? As I said last night, I don't owe you any explanation. Hey, Sherd. Is this big guy giving you a hard time again? Isn't he always, Hank? Just tell me what you want me to do here today. Well, since I can't imagine how you'll be able to help around here, I'll try and keep it simple. Whatever you say. Copy papers in the storeroom, copy machines right there. We just need to run off some flyers for next week's ball game. You think you can handle that? I'll try. Mm. You're definitely covering something up. You're crazy. That poor girl couldn't order a cup of coffee without you looking for an angle. I better go try and help her out before she messes things up.
What have you done, Sheridan? What have you done? What have you done, Sheridan? Next time, put a wet paint sign on the door, will you? Now, what did you say to her? Nothing. I swear. But something's definitely not right with her. I have to forget about that night before I make Louis even more suspicious. So you straighten out your problem with Whitney Russell? I'm not sure yet. Pretty girls, huh? Yeah, definitely. You know this one? Sure, she's around here all the time with Whitney. But you haven't seen her for a while, right? She moved out of the country. If she did, it's news to me. She was here with Whitney just a couple of days ago. All right, thanks. She lied to me. But I have my stalker. Crane Residence. Teresa, it's me. Whitney, what's up? I just had to lie to Frank again. I am so sorry, Whitney. It was awful. But I think I got him to back off once and for all in his search for you. You're safe. Thank you, Whitney. You are the best. I'm gonna make you pay now. 